Okay. Uh, with this right here, <laughs> let's take a look. This right here is a graphic showing us the normal curve where we have the area above a what. Now be careful. If you look at this, these everything on the curve right now is a what. The first thing you should identify about this when you see this graphic is that everything on this curve is a what. Everything on this curve is a what. Everything down here is a what right now. You should know that you should be, boom, everything right there is a what, Brian, because you see this and this. Every rank there is a z-score right there and a thousand points in Julio. Those are all z-scores. So we know we're seeing a, a normal curve with z-scores, and we see that we have the area above. So this is where this point is, a little space pen action. This is where this point is, and we're graphing the area above it. Great job following along right there. Practice ready for the test. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write a test question right here from this. So let's go in here and go before it and write out a fake test question. We'll say, Adam. Adam forgot to study for the stats, for his exam. For his exam, he found out that his grade was at the 25th percentile and the grit the scores were normally distributed with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 10 what did he make so what <laughs> you guys crack me up so what did he make so we've got just a random written problem right here, and you can solve it from this. Now, here is your steps to acing any problem like this. The first thing you want to do is before even looking at the problem, well, we need a little bit of info, we need to put on here the uh, in context. Now, it might give us the context, and we might have to use a z-score, who knows, but I'm going to write below zero. What am I going to write below zero? Does anyone have any ideas what I'll write below zero? What am I going to write below zero? I've got the information at the top of the screen. What am I going to write below zero? 80, exactly. So we're going to write 80 right here. We're going to write 90, 100. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going up 10 each time. So each time I'm doing this, I'm going up and down 10 from the mean of 80. So we've drawn out our normal curve now with both the z-scores. The z-scores are the mean of zero and standard deviations of one. And then we also have below it our in context. This is going to help us when we solve the question. We also probably want to draw on here how much each area is. This right here is an area of how much. Now we're probably going to have to zoom out to see. But how much area are, do we have on the curve up there at the top? How much area is up there on the curve? At the very top of the curve, how much area? <laughs> I would hope I get 110. I get, I get a question wrong every once in a while. How much area is up there at the top of the curve? Any ideas? 25%. You are right for 1,000 points right there. That is 25%. So we might do something like this, where we draw an arrow and put 25% right here. And then we go down here, and we go to 75%. So we actually have the 75th percentile, or 25%. So we'll do percent, because we did percent last time. It, that line or where this meets is the 75th percentile. So we do, we could answer a question about what is the 75th percentile right now. We've got that information right here. Uh, why 25%? Great question. Uh, because right down here, it's telling us the probability and it's 25% on the curve. Thank you, thousand points for asking. But that means this area right up here is a total of 25% of the total area. So that, that is how much that area is worth. It tells you in the probability area, that is how much that area is total of the curve. And always kind of make sure it makes sense because look at it and be like, does that make sense? This will, things like this could very well be given to you on the test. We've done many questions like this. Like my hope is to cut this video. So if you're watching this in a later year, hello future. Um, but this is a common type of thing we do where we give you pictures and you have to then use it because we can't have you actually use an applet on a test. And Z tables are, we don't use those anymore. We use applets. There's so much, they, they find you exact answers and they're so quick. So with this right here, I'm gonna do another thing on this. I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna plot a line right here. Now I want you to think about what I'm doing. I am now plotting the exact side of the curve but on the other side. So what I've done here 
is I'm shading the complete opposite side of the curve. Because I remembered something while solving this problem. If you go back and remember what the problem asks, it asks, um, and we'll always give it to you. It would be in the box. You are correct. Great question right there. We want to know the 25th percentile. So would you agree with me that this point down here is basically the same distance away? Like when you think about the distance, this is away right here. It's going to kind of be like symmetric distance away. So it's the same sort of like 25% on that side. So I want you to think right here. We know the z-score of the what percentile right now. We know the z-score of the what percentile. We know the z-score of the what percentile. What z-score we do, do what z-score we do we know? And the 25th percentile would be the red portion. Great question, Jacob, right there. The 25th percentile means you're below 50%. That means uh, the bottom 25%. The 75th percentile is where we're at, and this has a z-score of 0 0.6745. So that is the z-score of that. Does that make sense? Now let's go here. And let's find the z-score of this. Now it's equal distance. It's the same distance away. So what is the z-score of that one right there? What is the z-score of it? If it's the same distance away, can you tell me the z-score? What would the z-score of that be right there? Negative. Just make it negative. It's the same distance away, just negative. Now, when we solve this problem, make sure your numbers down here make sense. If you're telling me it's a z-score of negative 6.745, it should make sense because you should see it on the plot. If you're drawing this out, make it make sense, do all your drawing, and be like, okay, it's going to be on the other side, and it's going to be the same spot, just negative. Now, I want us to think about what a z-score means. A z-score tells us how many watts something is what to the what. How many watts something is what to the what. Every single z-score merely tells us, put it in the chat, practice, a z-score tells us just how many, let's see if we can write it right here, how many standard deviations away from the mean something is, yes, how many standard deviations above or below an observation is from the mean. So let me slow down and say that. A z-score tells us how many standard deviations an observation is above or below the mean. Negative z-scores mean something is below the mean, i.e. this area right here has a negative z-score. If something were to have a z-score of zero, it'd be right on the mean. If something had a z-score that is positive, they scored above the mean. Nice answers in the chat, thousand points, those answers right there. It is how many standard deviations an observation is above or below the mean. So think about this. This person, Adam, right here, they are how many standard deviations below the mean? You can just... If it means that, Adam scored 6.6745 standard deviations below the mean. So let's go ahead and write that out. Well, we need the mean. So there's the mean. That's just the mean of the test, 80. And then we need to subtract because he's below the mean. So we're going to multiply the standard deviation of 10 by the z-score because that's how many standard deviations he is below the mean. Now, an important thing when we solve this right here is that our answer must be between what and what with our drawing. The answer for Adam needs to be, whatever we solve, needs to be between what and what if this is all being logically done. Must be between, right there, a thousand points, and you are correct, needs to be between this. So we're gonna pull up our handy dandy calculator right here. Let's put this over on the side of the screen, go over here, and let's see here that we do 10 times 0 0.6745, and now we're gonna take 80 and subtract 80 from that, and there we go. That is the answer to the question. Nice job if you're solving this. Um, this is probably one of the more difficult type solve questions we could have on the test. Uh, that would be given to you, Zach. We'd have to give you that, um, and I kind of knew that because it's the interquartile range number, but we would not expect you to get the z-score to start. Uh, you'll start out uh, with a picture that looks just like, we're gonna go back, back, back. You would start this problem probably with a picture that looks just like this. That's all you get. So now you need to solve and put in, oh, it's coming back. <laughs> so you need to put in all that right there. I might've lost it all. Um, if we wanted to find the 75th percentile, the answer would be this. Um, technically, um, so the reason I subtracted is because the z-score was negative. So maybe we should, if we want to be really technical, we could write it in with this being a negative z-score. So um, that might be the more logical way. I just was like, okay, I need to go this many standard deviations below the mean, but you can just times the z-score if it's negative by the standard deviations and add it to the mean. So all this right here is the mean plus the standard deviation 
times the z-score, and that'll give you the observation y. So that'll, the mean, because it's how many standard deviations above or below the mean something is, so it's just doing the distance away from the mean. So we need to have the formula mean minus, uh, this formula right here, uh, this is not given to you on the test, um, and you should also know the formula, observation minus mean over standard deviation is z-score. This is just a reworking of the formula to get you the y value. So this one is equal to y because it tells you the original value. It just, does that make sense? So those are two decent equations. One to get a z-score, it's observation minus mean over standard deviation. To go back from a z-score, if you have the mean, the standard deviation, and the z-score, the reworking of it is you take the mean and add to it how many standard deviations times the z-score it is. So z-score tells you how many standard deviations it is away.